to Wellbeing A to Z. On this episode G, we take to the gym for some fun and fitness. We discover what makes gluten hard to stomach. We look at budget-friendly medicines. And we uncover Ginkgo's million-year-old healing secrets. The stats are in and they aren't pretty. A whopping 13% of young people are overweight. If you're sitting around the house thinking that it's high time you got fit, perhaps you'd benefit from taking those thoughts to the local gym. There are a number of benefits to exercising at the gym rather than at home. The equipment for starters. Good quality rowing machines and treadmills will put you thousands of dollars out of pocket. There are more machines here than you could possibly fit into your lounge room. The gym is where it's at for building muscle and burning fat. The more muscle you've got, the more energy you use because it's only muscle that burns calories. Fat is just empty body weight that we cart around. It's our muscles that burn the calories that help keep us lean. The benefits of regular exercise are well documented. You can stave off nasties like cancer, heart disease and depression just by joining the gym. Exercise can also help you sleep better and keep you in a good mood thanks to all of those natural endorphins flooding through your system after a workout. A mixture of cardio, strength and resistance training at the gym could set you up for a life of fewer complications. Once you start to feel and see some of the benefits of a healthy lifestyle and an exercise program, then you realise, a bit like cleaning your teeth, that it was worthwhile doing. You're not, you're not wearing dentures, you know, your body's still working well as you get older and you stay active and you look good. According to experts, the perks don't end there. Going to the gym will have a very positive effect on your love life, of all things, especially as you get older. A session at the gym is also the ultimate stress buster. Not only are you keeping fit and getting a great brain chemical hit by building the body beautiful, but the gym provides an escape, an oasis in the middle of your working day, where your mind can just zone out to the rhythm of your exercise. A lot of people are using clubs like ours as a, what we call a third space. It's a place where they can, they've got their work and their home, and it's a place that they can come and work out but also also take some time out. The thought of starting out at the gym may be daunting but you won't be thrown into the deep end. After signing up you'll be partnered with an instructor for the first couple of sessions. They'll tailor a program that's just right for you and in no time you'll be ginning it to health and fitness. For thousands of years, the people of Japan and China have been embracing the amazing health benefits of the Camellia sinensis bush. And now, the whole world is awash with the goodness of green tea. In days of old, this refreshing brew was used to promote digestion, regulate the body's temperature and blood sugar levels, and improve heart health. In fact, modern studies confirm that green tea does indeed prevent arteriosclerosis and coronary heart disease. Having in mind how uh, protective the endothelium is, which is the internal lining of the arteries, and uh, the fact that uh, green tea protects this endothelium, it makes the endothelium uh, perform better, then one could say that green tea will have a protective effect in cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction or stroke. Plus, a cup of steaming green tea is overflowing with antioxidants called catechins, which inhibit the growth of breast cancer cells. The cultures that partake in this daily ritual experience few cases of cancer in general. Drink to good health. Try to drink your green tea without sugar or honey. 
you could be destroying the antioxidants by adding these. With obesity, heart disease and diabetes on the increase, everyone is looking for effective ways to stay under the 80 centimetre waistline mark. If we creep above that seemingly arbitrary line in the waistband, experts say we place ourselves at greater risk of disease. Amid the barrage of food fads telling us to eat this and not that, there is one diet guide that seems to offer real results. Everybody's talking about the glycemic index. The food you eat is given a number according to how fast it raises your blood sugar levels. Glycemic index, or GI, is a ranking of carbohydrate foods based on how they affect your blood sugar levels. Now, your blood sugar is really important when you think about your appetite. And high GI foods, such as refined cereals, pastries and pies, white bread, short grain rice, are rapidly digested this means they make your blood sugar go up very quickly and go down very quickly. However, low GI foods such as granary bread, porridge, low-fat dairy foods, fruit and vegetables and nuts are slowly digested. Therefore, the blood sugar goes up slowly and goes down slowly. And this can help you delay hunger pangs and feel full for longer. But it all sounds rather time-consuming, doesn't it? Looking each food up in the guide, sorting through each type of bread, each breed of potato. It's all right for the likes of Madonna, but what about the rest of us who actually have to do our own cooking? According to chef Anthony Worrell-Thompson, cooking up a GI-friendly meal is not only good for you, it's really easy. Buy a can of beans, add a bit of tuna, a few herbs, a little bit of onion, something like that, a few chopped tomatoes. You've got a kid's supper on the table in no time at all. Porridge, breakfast, one of the key meals in a GI diet because what we're trying to do is make you feel full. If you have something like porridge or muesli, that keeps you going to lunchtime without that pang to have the old chocolate bar, you know, when your sugar levels drop. So our ancestors were right. Low GI oats are a great way to start the day. What about eating on the run though? Always look for the whole grain option over the white bread. And yoghurt's a slow burner too. Low GI is such a hit, it's popping up on shelves and boxes all over town. Low GI, grab it and go. Gluten. You've heard the word bandied about. Some people like it and some people don't, but what exactly is it? And why do some people go to extremes trying to avoid it? Gluten is a sticky protein that's found in grass grains such as wheat, barley and rye. So naturally, it's found in flour, bread and other cereal products. Unfortunately, there is a little plant chemical in gluten called gliadin that has some people doubled over in great discomfort. Gliadin confuses the communication between the small intestine and the digestive enzymes creating inflammation, benign tumours, gas, malnutrition and a whole host of other nasties. It's called celiac disease and it's on the rise. But you may not have to put the bagel back on the shelf just yet. Gluten-free flour and baked goods are coming to a store near you. Gluten puts the chewiness in bread and the bounce in the bagel, but other substances can be used to great effect. Rice and buckwheat flour can be ground and mixed with xanthan gum for that elasticity. But it's not just bread we're talking about. Gluten pops up as a food additive in everything from ice cream to ketchup. Thankfully, the range of gluten-free goods is growing, making life easier for celiac sufferers. You can slow down the sugar rush of a high GI food by mixing it with a low GI food.
Some say that fresh is best naturally, but these days the words natural might become an optional extra when describing fruit, veggies and grain. Human beings design furniture, cars, buildings and clothes. Why not the perfect plant? Since the early 1990s, genetically modified food crops have become part of our diets, whether we like it or not. Supersonic wheat that just can't die, strawberries complete with a frost-resistant pine tree gene, rot-resistant tomatoes. But are they safe for consumption? Infant food is the sole source of nutrition for children and um, it's very important that the, the nutritional aspects of that food is properly regulated. One wants to be absolutely sure, since it's the sole food, that it's perfectly safe and nutritionally complete. So that's one of the things we want to make sure. Scientists cite world hunger as the reason for fail-safe GM crops. However, more and more studies are showing that GM might not be a path worth taking. Genetically modified genes have been found in the gut bacteria of people who've eaten GM hamburgers and mice fed on GM maize develop infertility, according to the Austrian Ministry of Health. If you're concerned about GMs making an appearance in your shopping basket, simply check the label. Today, any food containing genetically modified ingredients has to display it on the packaging. Golf is becoming increasingly popular with people of all ages and it's proving a remarkable way to keep fit. According to a trial in Finland, men who play golf regularly are well muscle toned, lean and have greater endurance. What's more is, it was found that golf actually increased their levels of good cholesterol. It's all that walking. If you ditch the buggy and go on foot, you'll be doing maybe four kilometres a game. And if you go one step further and lug your own clubs, you'll be burning over 700 calories in a nine-hole outing. Add that all up at the end of a golfing week and you've burned over 2,500 calories. The magical number that doctors say keeps diabetes, heart disease and cancer on the back foot. Here's a little secret for you. People who walk the course are more likely to win. A walker's brain gets a chance to map the terrain more efficiently than a buggy rider's. It's right there in the stats. Walkers score higher. Get fit. Go golfing. Getting sick can be an expensive procedure. For example, a kidney or lung transplant patient who has to take 50 tablets a day may be up for a bill for over $500 at the end of the month. Is it any wonder that name brand drug sales have fallen by 12% over the last four years as people take the cheaper option? According to the US Food and Drug Administration, a generic drug is one that copies the brand name drug exactly in dosage, safety, strength, how it's taken, quality, performance and intended use. Brand name and generic drug making facilities both have to meet the same exacting standards. So you're not getting a poor copy of the original. The generic drug may look a little different in shape and colour. This is the law, that the active ingredients are identical. That's also the law. So as a consumer, you have a choice to make, and that puts you in a powerful position. Ask your pharmacist if there is a generic alternative to the brand drug you've been prescribed. It could be healthier for your pocket. You can go to the supermarket and purchase the leaves from a tree straight out of the Jurassic Age. Ginkgo biloba trees have graced the planet with their healing presence for a very long time. 
But nowadays, you don't have to trek through the mountains to a Japanese temple to procure the benefits. The ancients used ginkgo to improve circulation, eradicate tinnitus, and stave off absent-mindedness in the elderly. Modern studies have shown that many conditions, such as macular degeneration, early dementia, and depression, can benefit from the increased blood flow that ginkgo provides. But this tree has experts confounded. Some studies come back with glowing reports about neural protection and improved neurotransmission. Other ginkgo studies fail to come up with anything. The ancients knew that ginkgo leaves healed different maladies at different times of the year. It's this season-specific application that may be missing in some studies. Other studies are showing that it's the long-term use of ginkgo that yields effects. Many studies have only been weeks long. But can you learn millions of years of healing secrets in mere weeks? If you were to give blood on Monday, by Wednesday afternoon, you could have helped save the lives of three people. It's the greatest act of charity among men. Do you fit the blood donor bill? You need to be over 16 and under 70, have no recent tattoos or piercings, not be pregnant or recently have given birth, and not be suffering from any major health conditions. You'll be asked all this and more before your blood pressure and haemoglobin are checked and your blood donation begins. Your blood will be divided up into plasma, red cells and platelets at the lab, ready for infusion into trauma victims or terminally ill patients within 48 hours. Most people are a little anxious before donating, but we'll tell you afterwards that it really doesn't hurt all that much. And it only takes 10 minutes, from questionnaire to juice and biscuit. Can you spare 10 minutes to help save someone's life? If you prefer to keep your heart in condition by upping the excitement factor for more beats per minute, then go-kart racing could be for you. Pretending you're Michael Schumacher or Sarah Fisher may have you burning off calories faster than you can say Formula One. The go-kart is, after all, the smaller cousin of the Formula One racing car. This is where most pros get their start. Imagine the excitement as you whip around the track at over 130 kilometres an hour in one of these. Hand-eye coordination is taken to all new levels as you expertly navigate the corners, keeping it on course and avoiding disaster. Actually, for an ultra-fast sport, go-kart racing has a fairly safe track record. After you're fully kitted out with your protective gear, you'll be put into a group of go-karters who match you in skill and speed. So your heart won't be in your mouth for all the wrong reasons. You'll be able to cope with the track. Although rollovers can occur, make sure you're in a caged chassis for protection. And know your limit. Are you after a tame, family fun centre style track, or are you a serious contender? Would a high-end speed Grand Prix go-kart track give you a better run for your money? I bet those airmen who invented the sport for fun back in the 1950s had no idea this would become a worldwide phenomenon. You can even go-kart indoors, making it a year-round pursuit. Great way to get your heart racing. Try downing your ginkgo supplement with a warm cup of ginger tea for an added boost to your ephemeral circulation. Didn't we all dream of being Nadia Comaneci when we were young, with the svelte toned frame and those mind-boggling routines? It takes years of consistent training to reach that level. But the benefits of gymnastics are not just for the medal winners. Anyone can give the parallel bars a go with the help of a good coach. Core strength is crucial to the gymnast. A sustained handstand couldn't be achieved without it. This is core conditioning at its ultimate. The kind that could keep childhood and adolescent asthma away. 
In fact, gymnastics is especially beneficial for kids. Studies show that children who partake in physical movement classes lay down more neuropathways and are better achievers in school than those who veg out in front of the television or computer at home. There is also a proven link between self-esteem in young people and physical activity. Kids who do participate in after-school programs, like gymnastics, have better school attendance records and are less likely to partake in substance abuse. All the jumping action in gymnastics increases bone density. These kids won't have much of a problem with osteoporosis when they're older. But people of any age can jump into gymnastics. Go on, stretch yourself. Here's a delightful way to blossom into good health. Put on your gardening gloves and get down with Mother Nature. If you start young, you could be planting the seeds for good health later on in life. A recent study of 40,000 people by the University of Arkansas found that those who tiptoed through the tulips at least once a week had higher bone density, placing them in a lower risk group for fractures and osteoporosis later on in life. It's probably due to all the weight-bearing motion, the pulling of weeds, the pushing of mowers, the lugging of bags. Add this together with the nice dose of vitamin D from the sun, which helps your bones absorb calcium, and you've got great density. But gardening's not only good for the body, it's good for the brain too. A 16-year Australian study following over 2,000 people found that those who gardened were less likely to develop dementia. The brain is stimulated with gardening. There is a lot to learn and creative composition to think about. It's also a fantastic way to increase your social network if you get into community gardening. With all these benefits, you can see why gardening very quickly becomes a lifestyle for a lot of people. Dig in. It looks like modern medicine is getting to the very root of the cause of disease. Following the successful mapping of the human genome, it appears every one of us has at least half a dozen defective genes passed on to us from either our father or our mother, or both. We have two copies of each gene, one from either parent, and if the diseased gene is the dominant one, then look out. You may be up for anything from cystic fibrosis to Huntington's to being prone to malaria. Diseased genes usually cause enzymes to malfunction and proteins to be mismanufactured. And it all goes downhill from there. Gene therapy is about to end all that. Scientists have found a way to replace faulty genes with correctly functioning ones so that the body can then start to make all the right enzymes and proteins, thus stamping out the root cause of disease. Ingenious! Just under 3,000 conditions have been attributed to defective genes. Gene therapy will make many people's lives drug and surgery free in the future.